Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be back. I love this idea. The last oh. time you were here, you mentioned you were planning a solo show. Yes. Yeah. And it's called Like They Do in the Movies. Like They Do in the Movies. What inspired you to finally uh, do it? Well, I have a friend named Vernon Reed, the great Vernon Reed yes. from Living Color. Yes. Who encouraged me 20 years ago to do a one-man show and all that. And I was like, that's crazy. I'm not doing that. But the writer in me started doing it anyway. Well, that's... Sneaky writer. <laughs> um, and then that was 2000. And then 2005, I had some stuff together. I gave it to the great Mike Nichols. Yeah. And I handed it to him, and he said, who's this for? Is this for you? I said, yeah. He said, I got one note for you. I said, what? He said, double space next time. Because <laughs> I had That's typed Mike. it single space. Yeah. But I didn't understand what he was saying. What yeah. he was saying is, it's fine, it's great, go ahead. Go do it. What I real, I kind of took it like, don't quit your day job, just be an actor. Oh. So I stuck it in a drawer for a while. Right. And then I, during the pandemic, I pulled it out and I started working on it. Wow. The moral of the story is every actor is insecure. Yes. <laughs> and, and take notes. Well, it was the writer that was insecure. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. take yeah. notes, though. Writer. It took 20 years. Just write everything down. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so you started with Mike. That yes. didn't work out. But well, how has the show evolved without him? Well, I, I gave it to him and he, and he gave me his notes and, and I put it away. And then I had lots of things to do, you know, raising kids and, Busy. you know, working as an actor and producer and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and then the pandemic happened and I wanted to get back to my writing practice. So I got back to it. And um, it was basically just character work. It was yeah. like your one man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then I thought, ooh, maybe I should add some of my personal history. Maybe that would be nice for an audience. People like that. Mm. To get to yeah. know me, yeah. different parts of me, because mm -hmm. I haven't really been that kind of person, you know. Mm -hmm. So I put some personal stuff in it. So I have you to thank, because you are really the creator of she this form. She started the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. She yeah. 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 So I have, I have a little bit of you in one hand, and I have a little bit of John Leguizamo, and a little bit of Anna Devere Smith. Excellent. And, uh, and a little August Wilson, because August oh, encouraged yes. me to write yeah. first. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, you've been an actor basically your whole life. Yes. And, and you ta you've talked in the past about hitting a lull after you returned from two years mm -hmm. of filming in the Philippines mm -hmm. for Apocalypse Now. Mm. Mm. Iconic. You saw so many of your co-stars become these mm. huge stars from yes. it. Yes. Looking back, how did that moment impact you? Uh, it humbled me. Mm -hmm. uh, to really, I mean, it just made me humble. Like, I had to realize that I was not the center of the universe, nor was I the most talented person on the planet. Um, and that uh, just because I was in the most expensive movie ever made didn't mean that I wasn't going to have to struggle mm. and I wasn't going to have to overcome things mm -hmm. and change my point of view. Mm. So I, I, it helped me to grow up. Still one of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. Yeah. It is, right. yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's yeah. a masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if, I don't know if, I want to Did say you get what was in there? No, I want to say thank you for this. You know, the reason There's that I There's something in there, though, that was for you. Because I heard you had a question for me about pills. <laughs> yes. So what's in there is a pink pill for you. Because oh. I don't have any red ones what or anything. That? What? <laughs> thank you. I, I was going to say it's so nice because um, a lot of people know I have anemia. And so I generally do not shake hands. You don't hands shake hands. Because my hands are oh. freezing. Goodness, I see. <laughs> They're freezing at all times, and it's wow. off-putting to people. So that's oh. why I grabbed you this way. I see. And I thought you were giving this to me to warm my hands up. So. Well, you can have it so, to warm your hands thank up you. if you like. It's but there's wonderful. a pink We're also going to red it. You. I'm pink fresh pill. out of red and blue. You're right. Well, I was going <laughs> to. You know, I'm a Matrix super fan. I know. <laughs> I am too. I'm crazy about it. Yeah. I can't believe it is turning 25, yeah. right? It came out in 1999. 99, April. It, it remains a fan favorite. If it is on, I am watching it. Okay. So my question for you was, why do you think we are so connected to it? And living in today's world, should I take the red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> Morpheus. Because of that, I brought you a pink pill. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Fresh it. out of red and blue. But <laughs> the thing, it, the reason it resonates, it's the old story in the modern context. So it's the first time that the old story was told for the digital age. Mm. Ah. Right? Yes. And um, it's pretty prophetic because people are walking around like this most of the time now. Yes. Like, yes. like their virtual life yes. is as important as real life. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to be 
well, experiencing real life. So I don't, I, don't, some I, of them. I, I try not to, you know, make these judgments about people because, you know, technology has always changed the way we live as human beings. Mm. Yeah. You know, I fire, know. for example, the yeah. wheel. <laughs> these yeah. things, you know. Yeah. The wheel. So there's these good things that come with technology, <laughs> yeah. but but technology is always a double-edged sword. It, right. You know, and we have to we have to learn how to wield it well. I think right now we're still in the infancy with this technology. Yes. It's only what 25 years, 30 years old. 30 years. Yeah, yes. something like yeah. that. So we, you know, I think I, I'm hopeful. I always try to be hopeful. So I hope that the 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 kids that are our grandkids, for example, yeah. Yeah. are going to manage it a little bit better Yes, as adults. You know, you know, <laughs> you know I want to talk about one of my favorite perform your performance in uh, What's Love Got to Do With It? Oh. Because yeah. that was 1993. Yeah. And it, two of the most amazing performances that I've ever seen on film yes. were in that movie. You in particular, though, had to take a character like Ike Turner, who was basically a really bad guy. We all know that now. He's a, he was an abuser and yeah. a narcissist and probably a druggie, too, right? Oh, yeah, all of it. Yeah, and, he's everything. <laughs> and, and, and you not only captured all of that, but you made him sympathetic. How did you do that? Yeah. Well, you know... Um, he actually was. Uh, yeah. Well, but he, he that's was, how he good was an a, actor you are. He was are. a human being, yeah. you know, at the end yeah. of the day. Ike was a, was a human being. And Ike was kind of a genius. Yeah, because, very much so. Because yes. he the, he's the first guy to put a woman out front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a great musician also. He was a, he was a, he was a really he was good a, musician. Yeah. He was a really good band leader. But yeah. he, was, he was a troubled man, obviously. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to humanize him as best as I could. Yeah. Amazing. And, and, and I wanted to support Angelo. Mm -hmm. Because mm. I was a big fan of Angela's work. I had seen her on stage mm. in an August Wilson she play. She was brilliant. Mm -hmm. brilliant. She's been brilliant. I mean, Angela yeah. came out brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what did you find in Ike? That one spot where you said, you know, this is the human being he, here. You know, when growing up, he, he, I have something in common with him. And it's uh -huh. a really little thing. But when I was growing up, my grandfather and my father didn't call me Lawrence. They didn't call me... Son, they called me Sonny. Sonny. They called me Sonny. Hey, Sonny boy. It's one of those old oh, expressions, yeah. Old, yeah. right? Right. Ike was called the same thing by his uh -huh. family and his friends. They called him Sonny. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's a negative. that that it's just it's just like it's just a a wonderful name for a child that you love for a boy child. It's like so I was able to connect to that little yeah, kid. I see. Basically, oh, I see. And also, you know what? Part of Ike's problem was he was so good. He was a black man, and he was so good at what he did, yeah. he could never get beyond it, and he felt forgotten, which is why he started battling. Insecure. Insecure, yes. Oh, yes. Right. You can come here anytime you Please. want to, all day long. Our thanks to Lawrence Fishburne. His solo show, Like They Do in the Movies, opens at NYC Theater on March 10th. Tickets are on sale right now. Run. Do you hear me? Run and buy these tickets. Hey, Lawrence Fishburne's solo show opens at the Pack NYC Theater.